welcome to this introduction to the human design system, what's known as the science of differentiation. This presentation is for those who are curious about the nature and mechanics of the knowledge, as well as those who are wondering where to begin on their own self-discovery journey. My name is Avery Kretschmann, and I am a certified professional guide for the International Human Design School. We have a lot of information packed into this session, so absorb what you will, take notes if that feels good to you, and please write down any questions to be discussed later. Today, we'll be broken up into three parts. In part one, we'll go over what human design is, where it came from, we'll look at the aura types and definition. In part two, we'll introduce the concepts of authority and conditioning and how they can either be helpful or distracting. In part three, we'll break down a newcomer's journey to discovering their design and explain how to begin experimenting. First, please allow me to introduce myself a bit further and share a little bit of my design and journey. Um, my name again is Avery Marie Kretschmann, and my aura type is that of a 5-1 emotional projector here on the left angle cross of alignment. As a sensitive listener designed to guide others on their personal journey of finding aligned purpose in this life, I have discovered a way to make sense of the world around me through the human design system. <laughs> Throughout my life, I can remember playing teacher, setting up school <laughs> for my younger brother or stuffed animals, wanting to share information I learned with others and expressing in creative ways. <laughs> I can now see the mechanics behind these important processes for my life's experience. Noticing and understanding the depth of my emotional capacity has been crucial for the health and well being of my relationships. I'm learning to appreciate the space in between moments and release expectations. Human design was introduced to me in 2019 by a mentor I was working with who was guiding me through the Tao of nature. Finding out that I was an emotional projector resonated to my core. It was releasing, <laughs> freeing the part of me that was so hungry to be recognized. I was in a place of feeling lost and confused and honestly pretty invisible within the homogenized projection fields, but this information allowed me to feel seen for my uniqueness without having to say anything or prove myself in any way. The data showed me. I really am so very sensitive and I've endured my fair share of pain and confusion, exhaustion, and bitterness from trying to fit in, trying to convince my mind that I am good enough to be someone for others. I wanted to feel included, but also valued and valuable, but I was gripping I held expectations. I got caught in blame and shame and probability instead of possibility. The not self wears masks, plays characters to grasp for attention, to feel seen. The channel that is conscious to me in my design is that of the game player. It's this 2838 right here. And I know that there is struggle in a good game. The fighter finds out what's worth fighting for and perhaps who's worth fighting for. They learn to play to their gifts. They develop their strengths. The not-self strategy of looking for truth and love <laughs> has certainly felt like some obtuse game for me. And I feel pretty confident that there are other people who feel that way about their lives too, at times, <laughs> whether or not they have that channel, okay? Gratefully, and I do hope others share in this experience too, 
there's been this voice within me that has kept me moving forward, kept me growing, evolving, even in my darkest times, showing up, saying, keep going, there's more. (laughs) The next quest brings you closer to success, keep going. And I followed that. I follow my inner guidance, my clarity. And I've been led to this system that has been integral for helping me make sense of the world around me, understanding the other players in my ring. I choose to experiment because I feel seen without having to speak in the system, though when I do speak, I know where it comes from within me, and I can remind myself not to fear my own voice at times because I know that those who are meant to understand me will, because it's simply chemistry. One can only see, hear, understand, know what is meant for them in the right time for them. By having key words spoken to me, my body released and found resonance. The words, the sounds, the passing of the knowledge has been healing for me. I've truly felt how transformational this knowledge can be and valuable to collective healing. And I'm only a couple years in. I'm not even a full seven-year cycle in, barely halfway. As a projector, I'm a person who has been given the gift of being able to recognize energy within others and ultimately to be recognized myself as a person who can master systems and guide others with aligned invitation. Projectors are here to be guides of any subject, not necessarily of the human design system, though the depth of the system can be very exciting for an interested projector. Projectors can develop and share their gifts by learning how and when to ask the right questions. I have been working in the hospitality industry, serving and bartending for over 10 years, where I enjoy being a guide for a particular experience and essentially studying people and human behaviors within different real-time environments. I get feedback that my intuitive questioning makes a pleasant ordering experience (laughs) and observing different groups, different people as they come together is really fun for me. Outside of work, um, hospitality work, I'm an artist, a yoga enthusiast. I am a holistic care practitioner and an avid learner, always seeking deeper truths through books workshops, festivals, seminars, even university. <laughs> and this week I've be- even begun the um I just begun the foundations classes with the BG5 Business Institute with human design um in order to learn about the body graph from a business angle as well. I have become a certified human design professional in order to share the benefit of living your human design with others. Understanding human design is truly a personal journey of discovery that is unlike anything else that I have experienced. Now, I know that if you're watching this, you are interested in what human design can do for you. So let's begin. Part one, what is human design? Have you ever wished you had a user manual for your life? A GPS guiding your decisions. The human design system is a practical tool to help guide you to your satisfaction, your success, your peace, your surprise. Because let's face it, we encounter a lot of resistance in the world and every decision we make can align us with our potential or can take us away from it. The mind's insecurities, fears, or experiences of past failures can all get in the way of making clear, aligned decisions. Each of us already has a built-in navigation system that knows exactly where to go and where yours wants to take you is perfect for you. The human design system is not a belief system. It does not require that you believe in me. It is not stories. It is not philosophy. 
It is a concrete map of the nature of being. It is a logical way to see ourselves. Ra'uruhu is the founder, or messenger rather, of the human design system. There is something important that Ra would tell people at the beginning of his workshops, and it's that you are not being asked to believe anything that is said, nor to trust the teacher say so or experience. The human design system is something that proves itself through testing and observation. It's an experiment. On January 3rd, 1987, in the Mediterranean, on the island of Ibiza, a man from Montreal named Alan Robert Krakauer was living in a small ruina with his dog when he had an extraordinary experience, keeping him in a trance for eight days. During this time, which he would refer to as a mystical encounter with the voice, he was gifted all of the knowledge of the human design system. When he awoke from the trance, he arose with a new name and a new mission. As the clarion for the human design system, Ra Uruhu served, taught, and tested the information for 24 years until his death in 2011. Cosmically around that time, on February 23rd, 1987, <laughs> Astronomers discovered a supernova that was one of the brightest exploding stars in more than 400 years. According to NASA, supernova 1987A erupted with the power of 100 million suns for several months following its discovery. This means that trillions and trillions more neutrinos were ejected into our solar system, showering all beings with a substantial amount more cosmic data than usual. The neutrino is an elementary subatomic particle that had been puzzling the physics community since Wolfgang Pauli first introduced the idea back in 1930. Ra was told by The Voice that neutrinos would be scientifically proven during his lifetime, and they were. What's been discovered is that neutrinos are shot out as a byproduct of nuclear fusion, the same process that occurs in stars like our sun, producing tons of energy. In fact, nearly 70% of the neutrinos that we receive come from the sun. They were thought to be part of dark matter within the atom, but neutrinos have been proven to have mass. A very teeny tiny amount of mass, but mass nonetheless meaning that they are affected by gravity. Neutrinos can alter their state upon interaction, exchanging information. Ra uses the analogy of two cars colliding into each other. Both will end up with paint from the other one's car. This is called communication. <clears throat> Tens of billions of neutrinos pass through every square centimeter every second. We are literally being showered with neutrinos every moment. In 2002, Raymond Davis and Masatoshi Koshiba were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their first real-time observation of neutrinos from supernova 1987A within a nearby satellite galaxy in the Milky Way, the Large Magellanic Cloud. The emergence of the nine-centered being and the advent of the projector type took place in 1781, coincidental, or maybe, to, um, to Sir William Herschel's discovery of the planet Uranus. To quote Ra, centeredness is a structural aspect of evolution. Neanderthals were five-centered beings, like modern mammals, and so-called Cro-Magnon, or Homo sapiens, were seven-centered beings. We are nine-centered. We are a transitional form, homo sapiens and transitus. Human design is a knowledge of the mechanics of the nine-centered being, and this knowledge is the basis for the science of differentiation. The human design system is a synthesis of vast exoteric and esoteric knowledge integrated into a unique revolutionary map the rape mandala, and the individual rape body graph. The information that Ra was given is a synthesis of knowledge and systems that have shaped society and cultures for thousands of years. We see quantum physics, biochemistry, genetics. Astrology and astronomy gift us planetary tracking, 
These centers are rooted in the seven-centered Hindu Brahmin chakra system, which is a Saturnian model versus our current Uranian model. The channels, the connections between the centers are the from the Judaic Sephiroth of Kabbalah. And then the gates, the key element, are from the Chinese Yijing. The gates are then positioned within the body graph, creating a rape chart. A chart can be read and translated based on an individual's planetary positional data within the body graph. There is a mathematical correlation between the structure of DNA and the hexagrams of the Chinese Yijing. DNA is like a recipe book containing hereditary material and information necessary to build and maintain an organism such as a human or a plant. <laughs> DNA and the Yijing use simplistic patterns in both their function and form. So we have 64 codons and six groups of amino acids per codon within our DNA. And then similarly, there are 64 hexagrams and six lines per hexagram um, in human design. Okay. The human design system then connects those 64 hexagrams to 64 gates, which are represented in the outer ring. Okay, that's these guys here. This construct divides the mandala wheel into genetic potentials. The gates are activated by the natural movements of the solar system. Everyone has all 64 gates present in their design. There is nothing lacking or missing in openness. Only the defined gates create definition in your rave chart. What's reliable in your chart are the colored in aspects. Layering this all together, we have the components of the rave mandala. The inner wheel is the astrological wheel where the planetary positions are placed within the 12 zodiac signs. Here we go. The middle, we have the rave body graph with its nine centers and 64 gates. There's my mouse. Um, on the outside, we have the Yijing wheel with the 64 hexagrams and their corresponding gates. Um, and going just a little bit deeper, every position in the arc of each gate has value. A gate has an arc of 56 minutes, 15 seconds, and each gate is further subdivided into lines, colors, tones, and bases, amounting to 1,080 unique points of value per gate. The magic of an individual design comes alive through all of these possibilities. The body graph is a synthesized map to individual transformation, self-discovery. Accurate birth time is essential for an accurate reading. If you don't have a birth certificate or a time on your birth certificate, there are a couple options for you. If you were born in a hospital that is still standing, you can contact their records department to see if you can obtain your data that way. Alternatively, there are professional astrologers out there who can do something called birth time rectification, where they'll map out major moments in your life and delineate the time that you most likely arrived into this plane. I have not personally worked with an astrologer in this fashion, but I do have people in my network that either do it themselves or they've they've worked with somebody. Um, so if you like a connection, um, just reach out to me and I'll, I'll find I'll find that for your information for you. So in the human design system, uh, unlike an astrological birth chart calculation, the rave chart is based on two calculations. The nine centered being, nine centered beings are a binary consciousness. We are a juxtaposition of 13 conscious activations and 13 unconscious activations. Ra says in Rape Cosmology, the totality called the biverse is the byproduct of the juxtaposed tension between atomics and dark matter. According to the cosmology, in the beginning, there were two dark matter crystals that shattered and dispersed at the Big Bang. The yin and yang expressed from design and personality crystals of consciousness. The emergence of atomics also produced neutrinos, the most abundant of all things. The neutrino ocean produced by all the living stars is filtered by the crystals of consciousness. 
an aspect of the original yin, the design crystal, transforms the neutrino data into the body and the life. And an aspect of the original yang, the personality crystal, transforms the neutrino, neutrino data into the potential of self-reflected consciousness. What binds the biverse together binds us as well. It is the third and crucial element to the structure of the nine centered being. It is the magnetic monopole. In our design, these three elements have specific locations within our bodies. The magnetic monopole sits in the sternum and holds us together in the illusion of our separateness. It gives us our direction in life. It's down here in gate two. The design crystal sits within the skull, and it is the intelligence that operates and maintains the body. The personality crystal sits just above the scalp, and it is the intelligence that we recognize as who we think we are. The design is the vehicle, but the magnetic monopole is the driver, and the personality crystal, who we think we are, is the passenger. One of the most profound potentials in human design is the awakening of passenger consciousness. The two calculations in the human design chart display the imprint of each crystal separately. In the right chart, you see two sets of data on either side of the body graph. On the right, the personality data coded in black. On the left, the design data coded in red. At conception, the fetus is endowed with a crystal, a design crystal that manifests the evolving form and a magnetic monopole that maintains its unique integrity and destiny. Only when the vehicle is ready does the personality crystal incarnate. This event takes place 88 degrees of the sun's movement before birth, or more simply, approximately three months before birth. In a human design calculation, the birth time calculation of the positions of the sun, earth, lunar nodes, moon, and planets form the personality database, the black, the who you think you are. Calculating backwards from the birth time, 88 degrees of the movement of the sun, the point arrived at is the basis for the second calculation of the planetary positions. This is the design data, the red, the body, the biogenetic inheritance, the unconscious. Once the two calculations are complete and the positions of the imprinting objects are indicated in the Ray Mandala, the magic of a unique individual design can emerge. The positions in the gate of the wheel are then transposed to the graph itself. This, this activation of a gate is illustrated by coloring in half of a channel. This little guy. The database comes alive in the body graph. The graph is a map. Imagine that each center is a community. Communities are connected by roads and tunnels. The roads in black are what is conscious and the tunnels in red are what is unconscious. When the, when the centers are connected to each other, when the gates at either end of a channel are activated, a definition is formed. A definition is what throughout life will be reliable and consistent. So that these are def defined centers. Okay. Human design is about differentiation. There are endless numbers of possibilities in which a body graph could be configured. These configurations can be subdivided into four different kinds of definitions. So we have a single definition, a continuous connection between the defined centers. We have a split definition, two different areas separate from each other. We have triple split definition, uh, three separated areas, and we have a rare, but um, they are, you know, they're still out there, um, still millions of people <laughs> um, who have quadruple split definitions. They have four separate areas. And then we have those without definition. We have our reflectors. They experience temporary definition throughout the moon's monthly transits. Most importantly, definition or not, this leads to the core of human design knowledge and its value to you, which is type. Human design is about transforming your life by making decisions as yourself. And it is not about mind. It is type. 
that reveals the mechanical strategy and authority derived not from your mind and its deep openness to conditioning, but from your body, your vehicle, your design consciousness. This is the great experiment that defines human design. The experiment with your strategy and authority. We need it. We need to free the mind to see and discover the beauty of our own uniqueness. It all begins with type. The human design system also subdivides humanity into four types. The generators and the manifestors are our energy types, while projectors and reflectors fall into the non-energy type category. Um, let's look at our energy beings first. The generators are the dominant type of the population. They are the driving force of the planet. Jovian Archives database based on charts calculated has the current standing of around 66% of the population, combining both pure generators and manifesting generators because of how their definition shows up for them. They have an open and enveloping aura, and they are here to know themselves. Their strategy is to respond, and through response, to find satisfaction or encounter resistance through a signpost of frustration. Manifestors are about 10% of the population. They are the energetic spark that ignites the generator's energy to sustain. They have a closed and repelling aura, and they are here to understand their impact on others. Their strategy is to inform before they act to find peace or anger. Projectors are around 23% of the population, and they are a non-energy type. They have a focused and absorbing aura and are here to understand the other. Their strategy is to wait for recognition and the invitation to find success or bitterness. Reflectors are without definition and are just over 1% of the population. They have a resistant and sampling aura and are here to see differences. Their strategy is to wait a full cycle of the moon to find surprise or meet disappointment. Human design is mechanical knowledge. The mechanics reveal that we are a binary consciousness. The graphing purely indicates that we are a juxtaposition of two sets of data, which is the greatest challenge of the nine centered being. We are all objects moving through a duality of this and that. It is not this or that, it is both. <laughs> our seven-centered seven ancestors were limited to a singular consciousness and relied exclusively, <laughs> relied exclusively on mind for decision-making. It was more strategic. There was a need for control. The nine center design contains a capacity for emotional awareness and individuality that looks very different from our ancestors. There are no beings alive today with the seven center design, but we can see the old programming show up through conditioning. Okay, so just to go through the nine centers, um, we have our head center is a pressure center, it's a source of inspiration. Um, pressure to ask questions um let's see we have our root is the other pressure center um the root is also a motor um it's fueling adrenaline and stress um another motor is the solar plexus center um that's also an awareness center that is our emotional capacity the emotional waves come from here um let's see the sacral is a motor um, that is the life force, that's sexuality, babies in business. <laughs> if we see this in a um, design, we know that we have a generator. Um, the heart center is our fourth motor. Um, and this is the ego. This is willpower, um, commitments. Um, let's see. Another awareness center is the splenic center. This is our, our primal instinct that um our intuition and it's also our immune system um the third awareness center is the ajna center this is conceptualization um rationalization um da -da -da. the self the g center is love and direction identity 
And then um, finally, our ninth center, the throat. All roads lead to the throat. This is manifestation, speaking, doing. Um, this is great fun for the not self. <laughs> hmm. Part two, what human design can offer you? Now, remember something about openness. Whether that openness is in a center, a gate, or a channel, it does not mean it's empty or broken, and it does not have to be fixed. What it really is is a receptor. These are receptors. Remember that when you're looking at your body graph, what you're looking at is your differentiation, what makes you different from the other person. What makes you like everybody else is where you're open because this is where you're conditioned. When you're looking at your design and what you're looking at is what is activated and colored in, you're looking at what is fixed and reliable in, in you. It's not going to change. It is your difference and it's why everything in human design is based on trusting what is fixed to make decisions because those decisions are going to be correct for you, for your differentiation. Hmm. What is conditioning? We come into the world with a complete knowing of our path. It's in our data. Then our parents... Society, family, school, religion, media, government, lovers, the solar system become influential forces in how we learn to make decisions and ultimately find identity along that path. The decisions that we make affect the experience of our path. We are here to grow and to learn through our own unique differentiation. When we make decisions from a mental field or follow another person's path, we lose our intended experience, lose sight of our own true path, thus leading to suffering and not self-behaviors. Conditioning cannot be avoided, but it can be used to gain valuable wisdom with witness consciousness. Remember, not only do we have a unique way to take in and filter outside energy, we also emit energy outwards, which is how we affect others. Let's look at, let's look at an example of conditioning. 70% of the population have an undefined or open head center. All of them have one similar conditioning. They are pressured to ask questions that do not matter such as how, why, or what. If you find yourself losing your energy, chasing answers to questions that were simply passing through and not actually meant for you to act on, you may be caught in conditioning. Here is where the undefined head can lose focus easily and also where shiny object syndrome lies. I love that line from my teacher, Lavina Archer. She's a 3-5 cross of contagion emotional projector who I've had the good fortune of receiving, receiving my guide training from and who I am now studying BG5 with. If you are constantly finding inspiration all around you and jump from one focus to the next, you likely have an undefined head center. There is nothing wrong with you. You are designed perfectly for your trip here on Earth. Follow your strategy and authority to know what is correct for you to engage with or invest energy in. Beauty and inspiration are everywhere, but you're only meant to act on what is correct for you in the correct time for you. Understand your openness and what is conditioning you to be in your not-self state. Learn to use your openness to witness and to help filter consciousness. It's important to know that we go through cycles of seven years. Over a period of seven years, all the cells within our bodies regenerate. This is important for ease of mind during your process. <laughs> by choosing to become aware, by choosing to follow your strategy and authority, you are helping to reprogram your cells as they renew. 
Be easy with yourself on your process. Seven years does not come overnight. And it does not mean that in seven years, you will be your best you indefinitely. You do also have to do the work. You know, you have to put forth the effort. Seven years doesn't just pass and you get to go, you know, skate free. If you're not putting forth the the effort to change, to be aware. Life is an unfolding, but making aligned decisions can eliminate unnecessary resistance. Taking the time to understand your conditioning and your definition helps guide your process of deconditioning and may give you the fuel to be more compassionate to those in your surroundings who may be struggling with resistance in whatever cycle they are currently experiencing. Where we are open is where we can be conditioned and where the not self comes out to play. Here is where we can see the nine center design along with the not self strategies for each open center. Okay, so the, the mental question, the question that's fueling the not self in each center, we have the head center, 70% of the population are undefined in the head center. Um, am I trying to answer everybody else's questions? 50% of the population have an undefined Ajna center. Am I trying to convince everyone that I am certain? 30% of the population have an undefined throat center. Am I trying to attract attention? 45% of the population have an undefined G center. Am I looking for love and direction? 65% of the population have an undefined heart center. Do I think I have something to prove? 45% uh, of the population have an undefined splenic center. Am I holding on to things that aren't good for me? 35% of the population have an undefined sacral center. Do I know when enough is enough? 50% of the population have an undefined solar plexus center. Am I avoiding confrontation and truth? 40% of the population have an undefined root center. Am I in a hurry to get things done so that I can be free of the pressure? Where to begin? With your type and aura. What changes the aura of our planet is human beings living their nature. Right now, our collective aura is in a state of change, and as we awaken to our own reliability, our own imminent wisdom, as we reconnect to a sense of purpose for being in this plane, the density of unhealthy conditioning disappears. We're able to navigate a fulfilling path of least resistance. This is not to say that with human design, we will conclusively eliminate suffering. Change is a long and slow process, but as people wake up and realign to their own truths, unnecessary suffering is reduced one person at a time. Let's look at the types according to their existential question. <laughs> okay, looking at the types all together, we have their decision-making strategies, the signpost of their not-self themes, and an existential question that seeds their thoughts. The manifestor strategy is more of a formality versus a body strategy, but it is recommended that they inform others before they act in order to avoid anger. They are interested in knowing how they impact others. Our generators with their sacral power need to wait until their sacral response gives them the go-ahead, otherwise they'll deal with frustration. They are here to know themselves, so their background question that fuels their journey is, who am I? This includes the manifesting generators that sacral power behaves in a specific way, but having motor to throat definition creates an opportunity for anger to show up in addition to frustration for an out-of-alignment manifesting generator. They are also here to know themselves through the question of, who am I? Projectors need to wait for both aligned recognition and imitation when engaging with others, um, otherwise they'll experience bitterness. They deeply want to understand the other, which is essential to their journey. So their question is, who is the other? Who are you? When reflectors wait at least one full cycle of the moon, 
while making a decision. They give themselves time to consider perspectives in order to avoid disappointment. They are curious about who is different, who isn't following the program. To give us some famous chart examples, I use data from the genetic, um, from genetic matrix. <laughs> they have a massive famous chart database, which um, may or may not be accurate. <laughs> I have no idea, but whatever, this is fun. Um, within our friends group here, our iconic duo Chandler and Monica are our generators. Matthew Perry being a pure sacral generator and Courtney Cox is an emotional manifesting generator. Jennifer Aniston is a splenic manifestor. We actually have three projectors, but I put up Lisa Kudrow, who is a classic projector. Um, David Schwimmer and Matt LeBlanc are also projectors and they're actually both mental projectors, which is pretty cool. Um, Sandra Bullock is a reflector. She probably a Beard on friends at some point. I can't remember, but <laughs> I needed a rep for a reflector. So here she is. Um, and just as a little tangent, I added photos to this slide because while we are speaking mechanical knowledge, we are looking at numbers on a chart. We are speaking about humans. And I felt it was important to connect humanness to mechanical knowledge. So just keep that in mind as you're going on this journey. These are people. As humans, we are ruled by the genetic comparative to be attracted to what we are not. This genetic law that maintains the health of the gene pool pulls us towards conditioning. The quality and potential of your life is based on the decisions that you make and the, the direction that they lead to. For the majority of humankind, the minds of human beings are conditioned by their openness, and this distorts their decision making. We lose sight of the path and we end, out, we end up spun out in confusion. In human design, as we are a binary consciousness, Ra says that we are endowed with two authorities. The inner authority of the body to determine the life and the outer authority of mind to express unique awareness. In the conditioned being, known as the not-self, the mind expresses both inner and outer authority. A mind absorbed in the imaginations of survival will always withhold some truth in its attempt to control its future. We are not here to be absorbed in survival consciousness. Your strategy is there to align your life to the correct, ge correct geometry, to eliminate resistance, and to offer the great challenge of awareness to your personality. But the most important step is to try the experiment for yourself. Your inner authority is what you can trust to make decisions, and it is never the mind, says Ra. For roughly 50% of the collective population, the solar plexus center is their decision-making authority. This means that they need to ride the emotional waves of highs and lows until feeling clear about their decision. Give them at least one night, at least one night. Around 35% of the population are pure sacral generators. This is roughly 50% of the collective generators who listen to their gut sounds. Then we have splenic authority around 11%. They respond based on an instinct, intuition in the moment. Ego authority and self-projected authority are not minor in any way in comparison. This is simply a mechanical term. It's regarding circuitry. They are roughly 4% of the population. Um, they need to use their I statements when making decisions. Um, finally, the mental projectors and reflectors whose authority is not inner, like the body sensation that the other types can experience, Instead, they use their inner circle and their environment to soundboard and bounce their thoughts off of others in order to help them process a decision. These two types make up approximately 3% of the population. And they are not looking for other people to make decisions for them. They gain clarity through how their questions and reflections bounce around other beings. 
through your own experiment, you will learn to honor your strategy and authority and find alignment with decision making. It is the way to differentiation and the fulfillment of purpose. All right, part three, experiment with your design. The most distinctive aspect of human design knowledge is the recognition that not only are we a binary consciousness, but that we are designed to differentiate, to be unique, to be truly different. We are designed to operate out of our own authority, to eat uniquely, to live uniquely, and to be in specific environments to experience unique perspectives. We are not here to be generalized at all. Think about it this way. The moment you're aligned to the geometry that is correct for you, when you get into that movement and it's differentiated, the resistance disappears. It's your line. This is the beauty of it. The human design system is structured in a practical, logical way. It can be easy to get lost when learning to live your design, so embark on this journey with a guide. When you're correctly living your design, the knowledge and its vibration deeply interpolates your awareness, illuminating the path, allowing you the power of your own choices as an empowered being. The Living Your Design Awakening Program, also known as LYD, is the first of the foundation's courses in the human design study path and deepens your understanding of your personal design as well as the design of your family and friends. The LYD program is designed to strengthen and support your awakening process and living your nature to correctly be nurtured by your life's experiences. LYD is an incredible journey of self-discovery and knowledge that begins with your deconditioning process in earnest. Mm -hmm. to live your design practice correct decision making know the areas of conditioning and the not self within your design to see where to experiment there is hidden potential and wisdom lying within openness in the Living Your Design program, we illuminate the true self by dispelling the false and negative beliefs of misidentification with conditioning as truth. We facilitate the deconditioning process within your nine centers and hold space for your experiences. Here's what you get when you enroll in a Living Your Design program. We will explore your undefined and open centers. You'll get to know what conditions you can see the hidden mind game in your decision-making strategy. You'll increase your awareness towards the mental dialogues. Um, you'll get to understand the relationship between definition and openness. And you'll have a safe space to experiment with your strategy and authority. So why experiment? The moment that anybody can give up attaching reasons to chemistry is the moment that you really begin the journey of an aware being on this plane. It is such a beautiful thing to be aware. You do not have any unnecessary pain. Think about all of the pain generated by the identification with chemistry. There is so much psychological pain. It's almost unbearable to even imagine how much there really is. All this blame, all this fault, all this shame, all these things that come with it. And it's just chemistry. If you take away the reason, you'll see that it all disappears. It does. The Living Your Design experiment experience gives you the foundation you need so that you can see why and how to experiment with a strategy and authority. You can recognize the mental influence that hijacks decisions away from your authority. You can see your shadows, your not self and potentials of wisdom. You can live a life of fulfilled purpose. You can build a strong foundation of experience before you begin higher educational programs within human design. So here is the um, professional education path um, there are three foundations classes before you can um, 
begin higher programs. And um, so living your design is the first, it's a general education class. Um, and then you would go into rave ABCs and you, you would need to have a um, foundations reading from a certified analyst, a professional analyst um, before you can enter into rave ABCs. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and then the third class is rave cartography, which is a pretty cool class. And then once you do those, you can either go into analyst training, which is a three and a half year program, um, or guide training is one year. Um, that's the route I did for the time being. And uh, I am now in the BG5 classes and BG5 is a whole separate school um, where they look at the body graph uh, in terms of profit potential, I suppose, and your strengths. Um, and so you can also go that route and they have their own foundations classes. Um, but again, this living your design program is general education meant for everybody, regardless of interest in professional studies. There are no prerequisites for the Living Your Design program. It is suggested to read the Living Your Design student manual, which is available through the Human Design America website. Or if you are outside of the U.S., check the IHD school website for the book distributor in your region. Another recommendation is the Definitive Book of Human Design, which is an ultimate publication uh, that Ra did with Linda Bunnell, who is the director of the IHD school. Um, she was one of Ra's first teachers. Um, she began working with him back in 1999. It is around $50 for that book, and it is available through the Human Design America website or through Amazon. <laughs> it's suggested to get an overview or a foundations reading um, from a qualified certified professional, however, not imperative. Um, if you seek a professional reading, please use discernment um, when choosing someone to connect with. The IHDS upholds all of their teachers to an integrity agreement for the passing and delivery of this knowledge. There are so many... <laughs> There are many so-called um, readers, I guess, out there offering coaching sessions um, or whatever who have not necessarily been trained by the school or they're doing their own thing or um, just whatever they think human design is and no hate for their game. I'm not here to shame. Um, just please use discernment when choosing a professional because readings can be expensive. I don't want you to shell out a bunch of money to someone not qualified to teach, thinking that you'll be able to advance in your studies and then you have to go spend more of your money, um, more of your hard-earned money on aligned classes or readings to be able to receive the information that you seek. So um, look for this logo, this uh, certified professional logo, click the uh, check the qualifications on their bio or on the IHDS website. Um, a foundation reading can only be done by someone who has completed the three and a half year analyst training and is a certified professional analyst. A foundation reading is required for advancement to the second foundation class, which is Ray BBCs. An overview is a great start for beginners and can be done with a certified guide like myself where you will be led through your type, your strategy, authority, and conditioning potentials in order to start your deconditioning process. Jovian Archive lists all the approved human design organizations, and the IHD school website um, lists all certified human design professionals. Please find a teacher or guide that resonates with you. You'll be a lot more receptive if you can tolerate the teacher. So tune into your body sensations or follow your strategy and authority. Follow that yes. My Living Your Design Awakening program for all types will be starting on February 14th. We will meet virtually for 60 to 90 minutes once a week for eight weeks with a one week break. The sessions will be recorded and made available for personal download along with PDFs of the slides. Live attendance is not, is not mandatory, but is preferred for being able to share and ask questions. The great part of these live online classes is that we get to share and listen to each other's experiences. We get to learn from each other. We'll also have a forum via Signal or whatever else is preferred for keeping the connection and the communication open. 
I want to be able to support you. Are you ready to embark on this transformational journey with me? You can save $50 with early bird pricing until two weeks before the class begins. Um, I believe that's January 31st um, for this class. Uh, check my website for more information or to enroll. I know that life is wild right now. We are bombarded with information everywhere. So who can you trust? Trust yourself. <laughs> Trust that you have all that you need to succeed within your own body mechanics. By integrating the human design system and learning to follow my emotional authority of waiting, <laughs> I am learning to embrace patience. I'm learning to trust the timing of my process, which has allowed me to release expectations and go with the flow in a way that feels good to me. I'd love to share this gift of awareness and comfort with others, with you. <laughs> Are you ready? If maybe you're not into group classes or would prefer a one-on-one -on -one setting, I can work with you individually and really hone in on your experience. Just email me your needs. I am a projector. One-on-ones are um, a really comfy fit for me. I love to be able to focus and really um, engage with you and your energy. Or um, maybe you have a small group of friends who all want to learn together. Perhaps that you have an idea for a collaboration with a group experience to spread the knowledge in connection with your business. I am open to discussing your unique needs and ideas. Just email me. My con it's uh, contact at avrymariehd.com. Human design opens the door to the potential of self-love, a love of life and the love of others through understanding. Last quote from Ra, <laughs> the moment that you can see the helplessness of another human being and accept their helplessness, then you can accept their helplessness with real dignity and hopefully the respect will be returned. This is the bedrock for me. The bedrock is the integrity of a human being to recognize how important it is that you're correct, that love is not something that you need or want or you desire, but love is a natural companion in this life. And it begins within yourself. Well, thank you for joining me today. You can find me on my socials at Avery Marie HD. Um, if you have any questions, please, you know, um, comment, email me, um, whatever. I want to hear your questions. I would love to connect with you. I am available for one-on-one -on -one overviews of your chart. You can check out my offerings at averymariehd.com, my website. Um, my email, again, is contact at averymariehd.com. And that's definitely the best bet for connecting with me is through email. Um, you can find my professional listing at the IHD School website and also my listing with the professionals of uh, my teacher Lavina's network at thehumandesignsystem.com. Um, the My Bodygraph website uh has some really cool learning tools to play around with and you can get your free chart there um, and also access a talking body graph which is really neat um jovian archive is a great site to explore for information from source um i have a link to their free media library in the resources tab um, on my website cool so that's all for now i look forward to connecting with you whenever you're ready i love you bye